Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be exploring making marks on your art journal page and we're going to be looking at using watercolours today as well as a whole heap of mixed media materials. So I'm starting off in the Jane Davenport watercolour journal and I soaked the page just with some water and now I've just dropped some of her incredible inks onto the surface and then spread some more water out just so they can bleed and we can do whatever they want to do. Now this is just creating a background for me to do my mic making on. If you haven't used the incredible inks before, they're amazing. They're very, very pigmented and they've got, they're also scented. Um, the scent doesn't last very long, but while you're heating it, you just suddenly get these bursts of scents coming back up. So I'm not being very particular in where I'm placing my colours. I've gone back in over some of them to darken up some of the areas with the Jane Davenport Brights uh, watercolour set and these are two sets by designs by Rachel Beth which are handmade watercolours and they're the most amazing watercolours with the sh shimmeriest, I don't even know if that's a word, um, watercolour paints. So I think I've used Copper Candle, which is from the Happy Birthday section, and there's Cupcakes and Cocktails. Um, they're just amazing. Uh, using the Jane Davenport's Brights section, and funnily enough, I'm actually just using the dark colours from the Brights palette. But just going back in, darkening it, dabbing some of the paint off, drying it, just to build up those layers and the differences in colours. Now... Just a disclaimer here, I am not a watercolour artist. I am still learning how to use watercolours. But I've found in my exploration that, um, again, doing those layers is the way to go, just to build up what you would like to do. These are the, I can't remember the name, it's a Japanese company, Tana Gamamachi. I'll have to look that up for you and put the link in the, in the description. Uh, watercolours, which again are really um, shimmery, beautiful colours. The one thing I have learned about watercolours is use a proper watercolour paper. Um, I, for a long time, used the watercolour paper that I had in my Dina Wakeley journal, which I love. I, sorry, I don't love the watercolour paper now. I love the journal. But I always fought with it and since actually getting a proper watercolour journal, it makes all the difference in the world. So I, I do suggest that even if you get a cheap watercolour pad, um, to do watercolours on watercolour paper, it just makes all the difference. So what I'm doing now is actually the whole point of the purpose is I'm going back in over the different sort of sections that I've created and the different colours and just making marks with lots and lots of different materials. So the first section I used a Stabilo Oil Pencil which is a watercolour pencil uh, just and made a sort of loopy pattern. Now I'm going in with a Signo uh, Uniball White Pen and making lots and lots of circles and varying the size. Now, you could do this with all the same size, but I found that you get a lot of interest and a lot of movement in the piece if you actually vary the size of the, the circles, and it's quite relaxing to do. And this is why I do mic making activities and exercises in my journals. I find that on the days that I want to do something, I need to be creative, but I don't have a clear goal in mind that I find doing mic making gets my creativity out but allows me to be a little bit mindless with what I'm doing. I don't need to think about it so much. So now I'm going in with a gold uh, distress crayon and a, a purple distress crayon. So these are water soluble crayons, they're really soft to work with. Um, but very, very pigmented, and the, the metallics in particular are beautiful. The white is a chalk pastel, going back over. Now, you'll notice as I'm doing this, particularly with the, the white chalk pastel, I'll have to go back and redo it again, because I didn't really think about what I was doing, and obviously I'm putting my hands over it, and it does smudge. So if you are using chalk pastel, and you really want it to stay where it needs to be, use some uh, fixative over the top. If you don't have fixative, a good primary school teacher's trick 
when you don't have the budget to buy fixative all the time is to use some hairspray. Just be aware when you do spray fixative over something, it does go dull. That's normal, when it dries the colour will come back again, but I know my kids panicked um, when I used to spray fixative over their work because all these beautiful bright chalks would just disappear into the background and they thought I'd ruined their work. So now I'm using the um, Dina Wakeley Scribble Sticks. These are a pigmented paint as a uh, paint stick as well. So I'm just activating it by dipping it in water, using the base to make those circles. So that's my youngest daughter in the background, if you can hear someone talking to herself. Uh, and um, by water, uh, water activating it, but just by dipping it into the water. You can put it dry on dry onto the paper, but I find you get more, much more of a colour um, variation by actually dipping it in the water and activating it. So I was also using the Jane Davenport paint over pens, which was the purple pen I was using, and these are the glitzy marker, which is the gold, which is an amazing glimmer to it. So this piece, in all, when you see it in real life, has a real sheen to it, um, and you can kind of pick that up with the golds and the coppers in the middle, um, but when you actually move it around in the light, it, it just really catches the light. So I've gone back in with some purple uh, chalk pastel as well. I'm activating some of the Stabilo Ore Pencil which I drew around the Distress Crayon just to give a little bit of a shadow. And going around the edge again just to give it a bit of depth with the Ore Pencil. And you can see as soon as you touch, it's a very soft buttery pencil to draw with. Um, as soon as you touch it to paper you get a mark and as soon as you touch water to it, it just floods out. It's just beautiful to work with. So this um, is sort of where you're looking at it and going, is it finished? Is it not finished? And this is the whole problem with pieces like this is you can keep going and going and going. And when do you learn to stop? Now, I wasn't particularly happy with some of the patterns and some of the things that I've chosen to do on this page. So I needed to go on to another part of it and have a think about it. And to make it look a little bit more organic, what I wanted to do was actually go to the outside of the area that I've been working in and add some patterns to it. So here I am with the food ball pen adding, I wish I'd stopped there with this pattern. <laughs> I then went and put little spiky things on it. I hate that, but I like the rest of the things. Um, so with my food ball pen, going in and doing that pattern with the, the small and large circles, sort of making it sort of almost reef like that seaweed with the bubbles in it. I don't know what you call that seaweed. Um, just to make it a little bit organic. Going in with the loopy pattern, which is one of my favourite patterns to draw. And just sort of varying it around the page. Trying to keep some white space because that's an, an area where I really need to work on. I'm terrible when I'm doing an art journal page or any piece in filling the whole page and not leaving any white. And I suppose I haven't really done that in this piece because I painted the background as well. Um, but it is something that I am trying desperately to, to work on. So now I'm going back in with an acrylic ink and filling in some of the patterns in this the line piece that I drew. I wasn't particularly happy with how it looked, it just looked a bit plain so I wanted to put a bit of extra um, contrast in it and just by using an old skewer, using the base of it to make the small dots on the piece. Then I'm going back in and just on the scribble sticks adding some extra detail as well. So you can go as far as you want with this. There's, there's no right or wrong. It is very intuitive of what you're doing and it's just playing with the materials that you have got and seeing what they will do basically. So you can sort of think of it as almost sort of just an exercise. So this in the bottle I've made up like my own acrylic paint pen and if you're interested in how to make one of those on Jane Davenport's site she's got a, a quick or uh, YouTube site she's got a quick four minute video on how to make your own paint pens so I've just used some of her paints and some flow medium 
to make it liquid enough that you can use it through a very fine nib pen and it actually dries fairly quickly and it dries with a little bit of texture. Going back in and finishing the patterns around the edge and now I'm sort of happy with the balance of it. Going back in with a paint pen just to finish off, add a little bit more pink to some of the areas. And then with the Signo ball pen again just to balance it up a bit. Some of the white was all on one side and I wanted to bring it back to the other side as well. Still going, just, <laughs> just with the white um, chalk pastel going back and brightening that up again because I'd rubbed it off. Now I'm just adding in some of the Tim Holtz um, small chat words. I think it starts with small things, makes a big picture, and creativity takes courage. Which I thought they were perfect for this piece because it is all the small parts working together that makes the overall picture. So just to stand those words out, again using the All, My, all Pencil to highlight the edges, and I water activated them, put a bit of food ball pen around, and joined them up just using a line. And I wanted to join all the words and text, so I actually drew over the middle to connect the to a small height and put some barbed wire marks on it. So again, you'll see that in the close-up, um, how the words all join up together. But overall, this is just an exercise in playing with what I've got on my desk, all the different materials I've had sitting there for a while and using them in different ways. So I hope that you have a go at doing something like this. You could certainly, you don't need to start off with watercolour, you could use acrylic paints in your art journal. These are some other examples of similar type art that I've done before using the same type of um, process. So it's just experimenting with what you've got and having a go. Um, and this is another piece that I did, the one that you could see me flipping back to. So. I'd love to see if you have had a go, please tag me in anything that you do. Hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you next time on my channel. Bye.